how to soundproof a room. This time we're in a bungalow and the noise from neighbors is dog barking noise. The homeowner has already tried a soundproofing attempt and unfortunately it has channeled the noise around the house. So overall the noise from the dog feels louder. The noise from the dog is now overpowering because it's heard in the whole of the property and this is what a soundproofing attempt can do if it's not installed correctly so as usual we start off by removing the soundproofing attempt and in this particular case it is a couple of layers of acoustic grade plasterboard been installed over the top of a dot and dab plasterboard wall. The acoustic grade plasterboard has been applied to a dot and dab plasterboard wall using a green glue, a heavily marketed product where the homeowner has dot and dab the first layer of acoustic plasterboard to the wall and then gone over the top with two layers of acoustic grade plasterboard using green glue. Now unfortunately this has channeled the noise into other areas of the property. It's channeled the noise into this stud wall perpendicular, it's channeled the noise into this window wall and it's channeled the noise into the loft. That together with the recessed down lighters creating holes in the structure and the coving, the noise is now being channeled across the whole of the property. So the key thing to take away here is don't go over the top of a dot and dab plasterboard wall because you will channel the noise into the structure and overall the noise from your neighbours will feel louder. So always go that extra mile and take that dot and dab plasterboard off before you do any soundproofing. To give you an idea of how thick the system needs to be to reduce dog barking noise on the separating party wall, look how thick that system is, look at the amount of layers installed. So what good is a couple of layers of acoustic plasterboard over the top of a dot and dab plasterboard wall going to do for dog barking noise? After we've bricked up all the holes in the structure and we've addressed the direct noise path of the separating party wall, we now need to consider all the indirect noise paths. How is that noise getting in indirectly, flanking around the wall system that we've just installed to the separating party wall? For this particular case, because it's a bungalow, it's the loft is one of the key areas which need to be addressed. We need to reduce the noise getting in from the loft and down into that living room down below, but we also need to install mass to the underside of the joist. So we need to install sound block board to those ceiling joists to reflect the noise back into the room to give our homeowners some privacy. Next, we're gonna look at the fixtures and fittings, making sure all the skirting is isolated from the new soundproof walls. The recessed down light is gonna be changed to single light pendant so we don't have all those holes in the ceiling. The coving will be removed and we'll go for nice tight corners. And we're gonna install carpet to reduce the sound energy bouncing around in the room. Remember, by doing soundproofing, you're gonna put more highly reflective surfaces in the room so you will increase the echo reverberation in the room. So what's the result? Where we installed this system to the separating party wall, the homeowner no longer hears the dog barking. In the bedroom, we saw this as an indirect noise path of the living room and a five centimeter system was installed to the bedroom because of the window. Although we got a considerable reduction in noise for the homeowner in the bedroom and they can no longer hear the dog barking in the living room, just note the thickness of the wall system that's required to stop dog barking noise in your home. Do you have any DIY skills? Do you think you could do this yourself? If you're interested, I teach DIYers and builders how to reduce noise in their own home and the link is in the bio.